Chris Van Vliet at ICW in Miami with, you're a beast of a man in person, Gunner. Uh, it's good to see you. I like to hear that, man. It's good to see you too. And we're, we're in like your dungeon, and it was not actually yours, but this is probably a place you spend a lot of time. It is. It is. The gym's been my life here since I was a kid, man. It's something I've always been fascinated with, and you know, if you want to be a pro wrestler, you've got to be in shape. I feel you do. I like, I've always liked the larger than life guys, and that's what I wanted to be as a kid. So. I agree with you, but there are certainly a lot of people, a lot of people even working for WWE right now, that look like just a person on the street that don't spend a lot of time in the gym. It's true, but you know what I like about wrestling now is you you do have different aspects of wrestling. When I was a kid, there was just all these larger life guys. Now you got a lot of guys that are smaller, but they do a lot more different things. They're a lot more athletic as well. This is a very different era than the era, we're around the same age, than the era that we grew up watching. Uh, how different is it for you if you were to break into the industry now versus when you did? I think, uh, you gotta have something that catches the eye. Like what I mean by that is, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up, what caught the eye was character, character, character driven, yeah. you know? Uh, Macho Man, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan. But now guys, they don't have to be larger in life and big. They need to have something that's different, which is hard now because a lot of guys are doing flips and flies. But if you got something different, it's gonna catch the eye of either WWE, uh, TNA, any of the major companies, I think that's really what's going to get you a job. What is it for you? I mean, I know what it is, but what do you think it is that makes you stand out? For me, I think it, uh, I've always thought, I've always been told, I mean, I got called Mr. Intensity and in, in Impact. And, um, I feel like I hold and I give a different intensity than a lot of guys, um, you know, out there. It's just something, I'm intense with everything I do in life. My mom said it one time on an on interview for Impact Wrestling, how everything I go for, I'm, I'm I'm intense, whether it be in weights, whether it's the Marine Corps, won't be the best Marine I could be, or whether it's being the best performer I can in the ring out there. I try to give all the fans intensity. So, I mean, was that always a part of your personality even before the Marine Corps? No, I was actually a pretty shy kid. And growing up, I was very shy, but I kind of broke out of that mold, I think, once I got in the Marine Corps, because Marine Corps, you know, 13 weeks of boot camp, it's, it's, it's not it's not more yeah. satisfying. And you either have intensity and you want it to be better, or you go to the Marine Corps and you get eight up. I mean, you got drill instructors screaming at you, and, and you're, you're getting any stressful situations, whether it's combat or whether it's, it's training. Uh, but I learned to be intense with that, and I just took that into everyday life. Now. And, and I mean, what did your time in the Marine Corps teach you about being a wrestler, or just about being a person? It taught me because getting into pro wrestling is not easy. Sure. Um, like I said before, you have to have something different. You have to have the drive. I mean, I traveled many, many years, man, from Campbell Jr., North Carolina, to do independent shows for. 10 people for 500 people, you know? And uh, it taught me, the Marine Corps taught me to never give up because there was, there were about two weeks in the boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> but then about three weeks, four weeks in, something clicked. You know what you're doing, Chad? You are becoming a U.S. Marine. You are doing something that, that many people can't do or wouldn't even try to do. Yeah. Same as professional wrestling. It taught me, hey man, this is a dream I wanted since I was five. Um, there's gonna be bumps in the road. There's gonna be times when you wanna quit, where you wanna give up. But you can't. If you want to be the best and you want to achieve your dreams, you got to keep going. I think a lot of people don't even know why you're called Gunner. And I think that this story is amazing. Like that was your job in the Marine Corps. It was. You know, overseas, I, I was motor T operator for job wise. But uh, most of the time when we were overseas, I was on top of the truck manning a 50 cal. So you see videos of guys on top with the 50 cals and the 240 cals, the big machine guns. Yeah. Um, that's what I was, man. I was in Jeez. the elements. And I'm sitting there, thank God I made a home. You know, but it, that's what, you know, they came to me, in fact, come to me with an idea of uh, using a military gimmick. And they said, well, what do you think about Gunner? I was like, it's catchy. Why not? Everybody's like, well, it's a one word name. But then you got guys like The Undertaker and Edge. Yeah. They one name, so it doesn't matter. But uh, they did it. still on military stuff. So. When, when people talk about going to war in the ring, are you like, well, actually, I've gone to actual war. So I can take that aspect. I'm not going out there hoping to try to kill anybody. But, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you definitely can. You can take the, the it's a different intensity when you're in a combat situation, obviously. Sure, yeah. Different, you know, mindset. But, uh, you know, going into the ring, you're going out there to entertain people. Uh, how did you enjoy your time spent in TNA? Because you were there five years, right? Yes, almost six. You know yeah. what? It was, it was a great time for me. I started 2009 security, driving... Uh, from North Carolina to Florida for you know a couple hundred dollars a show to wear a security shirt and hopefully get a job. Yeah. Got my foot in the door. They did a lot of great things with me. Some of the best things I got to do working with Sam Shaw, working with uh, James Storm. Um, it got my name out there. I mean, it helped me build my brand. I feel like you have the look and the intensity to have been a main eventer in TNA, but you were never really given that shot. I wasn't. I wasn't. It's uh, always kind of a sour situation with me. Um, you know, they did a spot with me and Magnus where we wrestled in Manchester. Yeah. 
was a main event match I had. Don't know why um, wrestling is such a, a different industry. One minute you're here, the next minute you're on the bottom. I, just, I don't feel like it's anything I did. I feel like, you know what, there's a time and a place and it'll happen soon. Um, I had a lot of good opportunities in Impact Wrestling. Um, I feel like it's their loss day to get in that, that main event run. Well, it's probably your gain with how things are in TNA right now. Yeah, and you know, I still got buddies that work there, and I, and I try to keep everything professional, man, and, and I hope I get another opportunity with them down the road. I mean, it's, wrestling's what I want to do. It's what I do to support my daughter and my wife. And, um, you know, I, I, I think Jeff Jarrett coming into the company, him and Dutch and those guys getting wrestling minds in the locker room is going to be great for the company. There's been so much talk for so many years about you doing stuff with WWE. Where are you at with that? Yeah, man, that's a dream of mine. That five-year-old boy growing up still wants that WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, it's such an awesome company, you know, and, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'd much rather have an opportunity with NXT or WWE, that's be my ultimate goal. I've always been asked, even when I was with TNA, guys have asked me, they, what the goal is WWE? Sure. It's WrestleMania, and I got buddies down there, uh, the Revival, Nash and, and uh, Scott Dawson, man, they just got caught in the ball. So when I see that, I traveled with these two guys, when I see that, I'm like, you know, it's still, I'm only 34. You know, age is really not that big a deal for me anymore. Um, and when did that change? Because there used to be a time yeah. when, you're, when your age began with a three and they were like, oh. Uh, they yeah. got a back pedal. I think it changed, uh, you know, honestly, when NXT kind of hit the big big time with, uh, you know, what they did with NXT is that they're bringing in so many different guys and they see that, man, there's still guys at 35, 36 that can go, go, go. He yeah. lost Aries. I don't know exact age, but I know he's in his 30s and yeah. he's, I think he's older than me. I think these guys can still go. Bobby Roode, yeah. Eric Young. Yeah. Um, I think they finally realized, well, if they're healthy, let's use them. So let's say, uh, you know, it does happen. You go into NXT. Who do you want to feud with? Oh, uh, man. Um, I've always liked working with Eric Young. Honestly, and, we, and it's weird because he was in TA with me, but we only wrestled probably two or three times. But he's so good, man, and I would love to do a feud with him. That's one guy that, but they got so much good talent, man. That's a hard question to ask. But Eric, Eric is one of those guys. I mean, they've got so much great talent, and like NXT ends up being the springboard yeah. to then get called. Well, it's funny they caught called up because NXT is like its own product. They, you're right, and, there's, and I was just talking to Sam Shaw about that. Is NXT is like selling out of rails and sales. Yeah, it's a huge brand, and it's really like I think Hunter Hearst Hamsley had a uh, he had a vision. Yeah. You know, with that vision with NXT, look what he's doing. I mean, he's built a, another brand that's selling out arenas along with their TV. Do you wonder where your wrestling career would be at now if you hadn't served overseas? I do sometimes. I think uh, serving overseas and going in the Marine Corps I always says the best decision I ever made because it got me out of my hometown. I'm from a small hometown, Hickory, North Carolina. Um, it got me out of that town, and I feel like if I wouldn't have joined the Marine Corps, I might have just been sitting still. I know that I would have branched out and tried to still get a job somewhere somehow. But you know, moving out of my hometown made me realize there's a big world out here. There's so many opportunities. You know, it doesn't matter what you want to do. And the Marine Corps, I think, really got me out of my hometown. But if you're 34 now, we could subtract those four years that you didn't spend in the Marines. Maybe, you know, you'd have a, you'd be further advanced, perhaps. I think so. I think about that also. Um, I never regret going to the Marine Corps and serving my country, but I do think about that. I was like, man, four more years I could have been wrestling. Uh, you know, I still wrestled in the Marine Corps. Uh, but being in the Marine Corps kind of, I was signed in the Marine Corps. I could have been signed with a professional wrestling company. But I do think that maybe I could have possibly uh, been in WWE. Were you this big when you were in the Marines? <laughs> I went in the Marine Corps at 185, and four years later, four years later, I got out at 280. What? Yeah, I was powerlifter. There was no abs on that 280 at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we. Uh, what? So I, I always, man, like I said, I always in, enjoyed bodybuilding, and working out. Didn't really know how to diet at the time, but yeah, I was always a big kid. Um, the Marine that's Corps, a lot, yeah, hundred pounds. That's hundred pounds. Yeah, I know. And guys, uh, that's a human. I always tell people that you go in the Marine Corps, military in general, you do two, one of two things: you drink or you work out. <laughs> I, I just like to work out, man. That's all I want to do. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, big boy. Looking forward to seeing you in the ring tonight. I love that you weren't even supposed to be on the card, and now you are. How did this all work out? Well, I was uh, flying into Orlando to see some buddies, and Sam goes, "Hey, I got a show in Miami. You want to roll down?" I was like, "Sure, go down there, maybe sell some pictures, see some guys I hadn't seen in a while." Uh, we're on our way down, and uh, one of the guys was supposed to be here ended up not being able to make it for some travel reasons or something, and uh, I kind of filled the spot. So, hey, I'm cool with it. I, you uh, make it sound like Orlando's three and a half hours. It is. It's that close. It was a haul, and I'm like, man, I just got off the flight. I've been up since four, but that's what we do. Man. I'm enjoying it. I, I've, I've done a few shows in Miami, one TNA pay-per-view. I don't really think I've ever done an independent show in Miami. So, here we go. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Great to chat with you. Yes, Thank you so much, Gunnar. Thank you.